Hello, welcome back everyone. I am really glad to be welcoming Danilo Makito Saito to our round. Danilo is a multidisciplinary designer currently working as head of design for XR at Questono Maitone in New York. Throughout his career, he has led teams and projects for some of the top brands around the world, such as Warner Media, Magic Leap, Niantic, and LG, helping them improve their products and experiences throughout human-centered design. He also he's also a concept artist slash designer, where he has been exploring 2D, 3D, and VR mediums in his personal projects in order to keep improving his technique, his techniques and workflow. Danilo, welcome to Around. Thank you, Daniela. Really glad to be here. Um, so let me share my screen here. All right. Well, and... I'll leave it to you. Right. See you later you. for the Q and A. Everyone, yeah. remember that for the Q and A's, you can raise your hand and you can be asking questions um, directly to Danilo. Otherwise, feel free to type them on the chat. Bye bye. All right. So, just checking if you guys are seeing my screen. Yes, we can see it. Awesome. Uh, so, just let me. All right. So. Hey everyone, thank you for joining my talk here. Uh, my name is Danilo Saito. I'm head of design for XR at Personal Manual. And today I'm gonna be talking about my concept design workflow using 2D, 3D and VR tools. Um, I'm super excited to be here. So hope you guys enjoy this session. So just a quick overview of what I'm showing you today. So uh, first I'm gonna just give you a quick introduction about my background and a couple of projects that I'm working on. And then I'm going to start jumping to show a little bit of my workflow. So part one is mainly showing my 2D uh, workflow. So showing from how I do some rough sketches to a more detailed 2D renderings. And then part two is mainly showing uh, a little bit of my 3D workflow. So basically showing how I use software like Blender and Keyshot to, um, to like in a very basic way to create some cool concept, uh, concept design images. And then on the last part, I'll be showing a little of my VR explorations and talking a little bit why I think immersive technologies are such a powerful um, thing for uh, creativity. So just a quick overview about me. Uh, I like to consider myself a multidisciplinary designer, uh, mainly because I uh, always like to approach design in a more holistic way. So during my journey, I always like to uh, work on projects that I was able to interact I interact with multiple areas in disciplines in design. Uh, and so I started my career more uh, focusing in car design. So working uh, in the automotive industry and then switched to working in, with industrial design for multiple types of clients and sectors. So working for consumer electronics to packaging and to mobility, transportation and smart devices. And then after that, I started working in projects that was not just the product itself, but also the overall user experience. So working with UX for both for physical products, but also working with digital products as well. Uh, so working with apps and digital platforms and helping companies with their digital transformation. And more recently, I really started working with XR. So working with AR, VR and mixed reality projects and helping companies like have to explore and envision what's gonna be this future of digital interfaces. And to me, working with XR is really cool because I can really blend my 3D background with industrial design to my digital design experience in a really seamless way. So that's really nice to me. And also I really started working with concept art as well. So both doing, uh, using that in my professional projects, but also doing a lot of my personal projects as well. So in, in a way that I could always keep like improving uh, my techniques and also learning new things to improve my workflow and which is going to be basically the foundation of what I'm showing you today here. So today I work as head of design for XR at Question on Many One. So uh, we are a global design innovation consultancy uh, and basically where I've been working in most of those projects for different clients and sectors. So now we are more than 250 people spread across several countries uh, across the globe. So uh, it's been a very exciting journey so far. And just to give a quick examples of a couple of projects that I'm working on. So this was early in the beginning of my career when I was uh, working at Volkswagen and I was able to do like my own internship project and doing 
my whole concept car, like from the beginning of the, the process to the whole ideation, uh, 3D modeling and do a final play model uh, for like a final presentation. Um, and then working with a couple of industrial design projects. So working with consumer electronics and for instance, uh, leading the design for uh, this speaker for LG that was uh, released for the global market. Um, to also working with some package design for some important brands here in Brazil, uh, working a couple of uh, transportation design projects. Uh, so was able to let the design of this bicycle like from the beginning of research strategy to do like a final fully functional prototype and also design the service design behind the solution. Uh, and also working with some digital design projects as well. So, uh, and helping some companies with their digital transformation. So I led this the design of this uh, digital bank here, uh, both the design and the user experience uh, that was released uh, in the market last year. And in more recently, I really started working with spatial computing and XR and have kind of companies explore this emerging tech. So I really work closely with Magic Leap, who is one of the because startups in this uh, in this market and uh, helping them to help uh, explore and envision like what uh, some use cases and experiences uh, with this technology and this is spread across different sectors um, from consumer and both enterprise. Uh, so I was able to do a lot of sketches, storyboards, um, concept art images, strategic visualizations to help communicate all those experiences. And also in this XR space, I, I've been working a lot with some other companies that unfortunately I can't really show the project as they're confidential, but I, I was able to work with foreign media, for instance, to help them communicate some uh, initiatives that they are using immersive technology in movie, to, in movie productions to help some startups in the healthcare space and how they're using AR uh, and computer vision to transform uh, like the way you interact with health. And also working with Niantic, who are the creators of Pokemon Go, and uh, like they are basically leading these AR consumer uh, markets, and we are able to design a lot of XR experiences as well. So basically, these are all from my professional side, and I have my like I really like to do a lot of personal work as well, and where I can really uh, explore and really try just to improve my technique. So. On the professional projects, I always have to consider like a lot of strategies and um, business requirements and user needs. And on professional work, I really like just to approach in a more like what, what I would just want to improve in my, my workflow and my technique or what tools that I can learn and just have fun doing that. So I really like doing a lot of these spaceships concept designs uh, and explore some different mediums. So on these ones they were seeing, I was actually able to um, like do that in Gravity Sketch, which I, I'm going to show a little bit the process uh, later on in the presentation. To also do some environment painting, so really get, taking these designs that I do and put in a context and imagine like a scene, like some keyframes of a movie or something like that. So it's been like, uh, I was found fun to do that and explore and learn new techniques. Uh, and also doing some vehicle designs and because of my 3D uh, my um, car design background. I always like to like do these types of sci-fi vehicles, concept cars, and, and spaceships. And to me, it's always fun to explore this uh, because it's almost like sculpture they're creating with hard surfaces, and it's really fun to try to create new shapes and new, uh, new unique designs and these ones. And I can test different techniques and different tools doing that. So, so far, I just wanted to show a quick overview of everything that I've been working on so far. And right now I just want to enter in my workflow and how I do like uh, the things that I do normally. And I first want to start with my 2D workflow and basically because 2D to me is the foundation of everything. And it's at the first place, like it's, it's, the, it's why I chose design as a profession in the first place uh, because I was, I always loved to draw since I was a kid. And to me, it's a really fun way to explore different ideas. And it doesn't mean that to be a designer or artist, like you need to 
draw well because there are other a lot of several tools nowadays that you don't need to do that. But to me, like 2D, I really like to use as because I I always feel like this. I have a really creative approach and creative freedom doing that. So everything that I do, I always start with a bunch of different sketches and thumbnails and really try and open up a lot of ideas, uh, no matter if it's on my professional work or, or also in my prof um, personal work. So, and whether if I'm doing like a physical product or a digital experience or a XR, XR scene. Um, and I always like to explore and uh, and a lot of different ideas and put that on the wall so we can review with the, with the whole team. And also uh, in my personal side, like I was sketching and doodling all around in my notebooks or whatever I had at hand and really try to just to capture ideas and try to uh, explore uh, different shapes and unique, try to get to unique design. So both doing cars, but also spaceships um, and like really exploring different ideas. So you can see here on the top is a little bit of my, how I start doing like just this very quick doodles and really just trying to capture the silhouette or something interesting. And then somehow like I, I evolve that into uh, a more uh, refined sketch. So doing a little bit of line work and sorry uh, and putting a little markers as well to show the volume but the idea here is really to be uh, really fast and explore different shapes and uh, unique things that i can revisit that later in the future if i found something interesting um and eventually i like to evolve that into a more digital painting um and still trying to keep it very loose and explore ideas fast so here are just examples that I, on the right is just doing Photoshop and then on the left is just playing with Procreate. And I like to play with this black and white shape because I can, um, yeah, really block ideas and compositions really fast and just doing, playing with some brush strokes and yeah, doing some photo bashing to try to capture um, a, a volume or like a, just an idea. And after that, I sometimes I'd like to evolve that into a more uh, detailed painting. Uh, so this one's actually, I use a very basic geometry as 3D models um, and just to get like the basic perspective. But most of the work here was done actually in, in 2D. So using a lot of textures and, and brushes uh, and a little bit of um, photo bashing and it's really nice how far you can push the 2D paintings uh, if you want. And you have a lot of freedom in doing that. And I also like to, uh, I was at the time like doing a lot of these concept car sketches because to me uh, doing this like was a really fun way to explore different shapes as well. So um, I started really doing this to, to capture and training my technique to represent lights and shadows and highlighting overall uh, and really try to do whatever came my mind. So uh, just created just random concept cars as a whole. And I started really doing a lot of this. Uh, and I set myself a goal a couple of years ago of doing this one per week. And the goal was really to just practice and really try to uh, find a lot of volumes and how to represent um, perspective and shapes in overall. And it was really happy in the end that I was able to actually uh, was getting like more uh, like faster and really try to pay attention to some other details that I wasn't like in the beginning. So it was a really fun way to practice this. And so just to give you a quick overview and breakdown of uh, like of my workflow when I was actually doing one of this kind of um, paintings or sketches. Uh, so here, like I always start with a more really rough sketch just to try to capture the idea like this the the perspective like the the theme overall and the proportions and then uh, you can see like it's very hairy uh, very rough and then i started like just blocking the paths in photoshop um trying to get like the uh, like blocking the basic shapes of the car and then uh, adding a little bit of brush strokes to try to capture the volume so adding some shadows and lighting 
and really adding some extra details. So working 2D is really nice because it's 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 kind of fast if you want to represent a volume. You don't actually need to build any 3D and pay attention to a lot of details there because you're not actually solving anything. You're just playing and you know, almost like creating a sculpture uh, with brush strokes. And and so it's it's you have a really creative freedom doing that. So here just doing some photo bashings of the wheels, like whenever I don't want to spend some time. Um, in, in some parts of the of the sketch, so adding some extra details, add a spoiler there, um, and yeah, some other um, some other details on the side, working a little bit on the highlights, uh, adding some extra colors, adding a lot of other details like graphics gaps in overall, and then after a few color corrections, I can get to the final result, uh, which is this one. So. Um, so yeah, like 2D is always great too, because I somehow, uh, not saying like it was totally fast, but after a couple of hours, I can get to a nice result and not solve everything about, um, about the concept, but really represent what I want uh, in that concept design and the overall uh, shape that I want to, to, to visualize. So, this was the 2D workflow that I normally do. And now I'm going to jump into showing a little bit of how I approach 3D. And the reason why I like to want to do this transition is because I, I use 3D in kind of like in a basic way. So because I kind of I want to use 3D in a way that I can um, really like use have the efficiency of actually building something and getting all the perspectives or the lighting for free that 3D give me. But I also want to still maintain what I have, like freedom that I have in 2D. So just show a couple of examples here of how I approach that. So this was a, uh, a sketch that I did a couple of years ago and I was looking for something so I can build in Blender. At the time I was actually learning Blender. I used, I used to use 3DS Max in the beginning and then in the, like in the last two years, I just transitioned into Blender. Um, and then with that, I just started just playing with Blender. And here's just a clip of showing a little bit of my process. And the way, the way I like Blender and Polygon software is, as a whole is because it's almost like you're sculpturing and you're really trying to like play with the shapes without having too much precision. And to me, that's really great because I can keep my creative exploration why I'm doing the 3D model. So you can see here that I'm not totally actually following this sketch, but just using that as a reference and just playing, getting the, like refining the, the, the surfaces and try to sculpture something interesting. And whenever I get to a nice result, I just jump into Keyshot. So I simply love Keyshot because it's so easy to, to use, like it's just, um, putting some materials, some HDRIs, and you can like quick visualize um, in a really nice way. And the way I use like is this going back and forth process of like I do something Blender, then jump into Keyshot to see how it looks, and then I see something that I can make it better. Jump back to to Blender again, do some corrections, and then jump back to Keyshot. So until I get to something that I think it's really uh, really nice. And, and when I get to a nice result, I just do a basic rendering. And here it's good for you to just see um, how like I do like my rendering basically. And um, you can see like there's, it's very basic. There's a lot of details missing and like the wheels are not there, like all those gaps, like the surfaces are somehow like not totally quite right. But uh, is there a, this is the way like I like to approach and like to uh, use 3D as a way to give me a really good base so that I can jump to Photoshop and really start adding those other details and continue my creative process as a way as I'm doing sketch. So after I do some post work, I can get to this final result. Um, and really to uh, like, you can see like I added the wheels there as I did in, like in, in my sketch, add all those gaps, all those graphics around the car, and do some corrections. And to me, like I this this makes me like maintain my process really fast and keeps my my um, yeah my exploration more in a free way. So 
yeah, you can see here uh, the back view, like just the basic rendering and after some post working in, in Photoshop. Um, and yeah, like it is just the front view. Um, can I ask you a question? Like, are you guys seeing this panel here on the side? Uh, like the, my camera and the names? No, we're just seeing no. your, your image. Like the, oh, okay, the nice. Yeah. I was a little worried because it takes some part of the, the presentation. Okay, so fine. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, so like this is another just example of some uh, another exploration that I did in Blender as well. So again, doing another 3D model, uh, really basic. You can see missing a lot of details. Um, then I, in this time, I wanted to be like, uh, just give it more context in the environment. So just block it some boxes all around to do like this minimalistic house to create an environment, but also play with the, um, with the reflections in the car and then jump to, to key shots, add some materials, and then I have the final rendering. So you can see again, like it's very basic, like still very, very rough, but then and here I'm just gonna show like the breakdown of what I actually do in Photoshop. Um, so then like first I do some corrections here, like whatever, like some lines that I, or some reflections that are not totally right. Uh, and then just add some levels to pop up more the, 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 the shape uh, and the wheels here. So I was doing like more uh, Audi concept car. So I took a, a wheel from, from an Audi. Um, do some desaturation on the colors in the back and adjust it a little bit there on the on the side so, so like I don't refine too much like I could be tweaking the model in Blender a lot and to do like to be perfect but I just don't want to spend that much time so just whenever I see some issues I just correct that in, in post work and here just adding some gaps around the car so I like like I get this question a lot in Instagram, like, hey, how do you do, did you do that in Blender, like all those gaps? And I was like, hey, I, I, I'm not, I don't do that because it's just too much work. And, and the way I do, like, it's just do these quick explorations in, in Photoshop. And then after that, I just add some paths and then, yeah, create those gaps. And so it's, to me, it's way easier. And it's, to me, it's enough for the goal that I want on this concept design. And then add some extra elements all around the car and added some um, like textures on the floor. Uh, and then like after a couple of um, yeah, color corrections levels, I can get to the final rendering. So you can see like from what it was like the beginning of the rendering and to the end, like it seems like, oh, that's a lot of work, but to me, like it's the way I feel that's faster and I would waste a lot of more time if I would actually be tweaking and doing everything perfect in 3D. So again, like this is the basic rendering that I did in Keyshot and then after some post work um, in Photoshop, I can yeah, get this final look. Also here in the back, yeah, the same thing. So, um, and this is just the last example, like uh, my 3D process and in this time I, I didn't have like an actual sketch like a, uh, like a detail rendering and that's normally the uh, the process because uh, if I want to build something pretty I don't want to spend that time like actually doing a 2D rendering there just want to jump right into 3D and th this is the way I approach is um, to like doing these quick doodles in my notebooks like you know, during the notes in during meetings and try to get to something that I found interesting so this one I was trying to think like a Mars rover and just playing like, oh, maybe it's a sharp edge or like a more rounded edge. So I chose like this little sketch here in the top right. And then I started modeling that in Blender and I got to this result. And again, like it's still not so perfect model, like it's very basic, but that was just enough for me. And then do some quick rendering key shot, like some basic materials. Um, and then just after some post work in Photoshop, yeah, can get to this final look. So you can see like all those gaps, all those graphics, textures on the wheels, everything. I just prefer doing that in post. I could do that in Keyshot as well. Sometimes I do, but yeah, sometimes it just, to me, it's just faster if I jump to uh, continue my exploration because I don't have totally clear in my mind what I want to do. So to me, it's easier if I continue exploring 2D. So here's just the back view um, of the 
of the model. And also sometimes I like to explore some other tools and other softwares. So because I work with XR and sometimes I need to represent things in like in movements, in motion, uh, I really like to like do some play with After Effects to showcase like an experience or something, the things like you're actually touching and moving. And in this time I was just, I was learning uh, After Effects and I was just playing like, hey, what if I actually do something like a, a motion there on the side panel UI. So yeah, just play a little bit with that. I'm totally not an expert in After Effects, like this, just know the basics, but yeah, to me it like gives you a little like more life to the concept that you're creating. So I like to mix it different mediums to, yeah, to create this concept designs. And eventually I end up doing like a environment painting um, in context. So in this case, like, of course, I wanted to do like the Mars or on Mars. Um, and here, but if, again, I always follow the same process of using key shots, like do some basic renderings and add some extra details in Photoshop. So uh, all those buildings in the back there, uh, the astronauts some rocks and a little bit of mountains are the, of that I do some in post uh, in Photoshop. But in this case, like I actually use a, a stock image on the back um, when I did the rendering, which I show, I'm gonna show you a little more how to do these environment paintings uh, later on. So here, uh, now I'm gonna show you a little bit of my VR workflow. And, and to me, like why I think VR is such a powerful tool and immersive technologies as a whole is because now I can really like, I showed you that 2D to me is like, I really like because I have really creative freedom. I can like do something really quick, like gesture and really capture the proportions that I want. And in, two, in 3D, I really have the, the efficient of, efficiency of like actually building something and have all those perspectives and work and actually um, just do the rendering and have all the lighting, shadows and, and materials for free because you're actually building something. Um, but in 3D, sometimes it's kind of rough because you, you, I don't want to lose my freedom that I have in 2D. So to me, VR is a perfect way to combine both of these two worlds because now I can really sketch uh, and still be very rough, but I'm ready in space and in a way that I can get to the, the proportions really, really quick and then can start really building and having that efficiency that I have in 3D and have this extra component of being something really immersive. So beginning of last year, I bought this little guy here, which is the Oculus Quest, like the first edition, and start playing around with Gravity Sketch. And I'm gonna show you now a clip of the process of actually me building uh, a spaceship in there. Oops, sorry. And now as you can see here that I um, just catching space, which is really fun and you can see like I'm still like very roughy, like uh, like a lot of lines and, but the goal here is just to capture the feeling of what I want of the spaceship and adding a lot of those like rough details, but trying to basically get the proportion right and what I really want. And when I get to a nice result, I just start pulling the surfaces all around uh, the vehicle. And, and yeah, it's really just playing around and yeah, pulling the surface uh, around the sketch. And you can see like what's really good is because I can maintain my sketch there in space and we call less opacity and really maintain like, like the, all the gestures that I was doing in my, in my, my sketch, um, which is something really hard when you're actually doing like the 3D traditional model. So, because it's, once the toughest part is actually capturing the gesture that you're having when they sketch and bring that to life in 3D. So I, I kind of feel like the VR, it's, this transition is way better um, somehow. And here's just, I, I'll fast forward a little bit, just adding some uh, refinements on the surfaces, uh, adding some extra details all around, like the windshield um, here, like working a little bit on the bottom. So it's kind of cool, like you can rotate and be, closer to a piece. So in this case, like I'm just working on details of the thrusters and just copying some uh, parts and to add some extra details and like really, really close, working really closely with the engine and 
grouping and add, adding just uh, that extra details. Um, and yeah, just really uh, adding all those details around uh, the model. And then again, like this is just the final touches, um, just correct a little bit and then work a little bit at the bottom. Um, and then yeah, I can get to like, a, I'm happy with this re results now, just rotating. And then here's just a clip of the final model and it's just grayscale because just show you like the, the actual surfaces. But uh, yeah, you can, you can get to her. I was really impressed with like how actually good you can actually get to, to the model in VR. So yeah, a lot of details that you can add and then follow the same process. So that's why like in lots like, oh, totally new medium, that's totally completely new workflow. No, it's actually very simple. And then I just export that, uh, bring them to T-Shot and follow the same process that I showed you before. And then do some of my post work in, in, in Photoshop. And then I can get to the final rendering of like actually adding all those textures and all those details and really do something that's very convincing and um, feels kind of realistic. Uh, but when you see like the actual model, it's just like really basic uh, shapes in overall. So just the from the back view. Uh, and then I can take this model, do like a environment painting around, like as a scene, like it's um, running away from like a battle or just doing that, like putting that flying uh, around the sky. So yeah, it's, it's very cool. Uh, Another example here is another spaceship that I did in VR as well. And at this time I was watching the first season of Mandalorian and I was really blown away by all the designs and uh, like, especially the, the Razor Crest spaceship. And I simply love that design because to me it's so simple, but it's, it's so cool at the same time. Uh, and I was like really just trying to do something inspired by that. And yeah, just, yeah, doing something, yeah, in the, getting like the basic overall feeling of that and just and started doing some sketches and then jump into gravity sketching and start um, really sketching something. And so here you see on the left is just the basic um, spatial sketch and very roughly just getting the proportion right, what I want for the main thing. And here on the right is um, basically the, the final 3D model and with all those details and still like basic, but yeah, it's, when you see like a little far away, like you, it's kind of, you, you have the feeling that uh, there's a lot of details in there. And yeah, you can, like this is the final, just screenshot of the model. And then here's just showing a little bit my workflow after when I'm doing to key shot. So yeah, I can export from, from Gravity Sketch, like where the materials that I want, the objects that I want the same material, like where you want like glossy or made or glass. Uh, and just playing with materials, add some HDRIs there. Um, yeah, just trying to capture the volume, if the lighting is showing a little in a nice way what I want, and then I do a basic rendering, uh, and then I start playing with in Photoshop, and then adding all those extra gaps that I didn't put on the model, and doing some paths all around. Um, to like capture the details, adding some textures. Uh, I could do that in T-Shot as well, but to me, I sometimes I still prefer doing Photoshop to uh, to explore where I want more dirty or more yeah more clean. So adding those extra details, um, extra graphics. So I still continue my creative process, testing, see if it's not working. Just delete that layer, try another thing, and then. Yeah, play with some levels, color corrections, and yeah, so I can get to this final result, which is this rendering here. So yeah, this just the front view, the back view as well. So again, following the same process, detail out. Um, and then the front view, um, another front view. <clears throat> and then I, sometimes I, then as I told you, like I like to do some environment paintings and put the spaceship in context and visualize an actual scene happening. So like I'm not an environment artist, like I like, but I try to see a lot of workflow from amazing artists out there that do like 
and this amazing concept art and really try to learn and to learn new tricks and how to do that. And I was trying to learn like EV or cycles in Blender and I'm still learning, but I always somehow go back to Keyshot because it's to me, it's, it's, it's the basic and simplest uh, workflow that I'm used to. And in this time I use the same. So here, like I just imported a spaceship to Blender, like the spaceship that I did in Gravel Sketch, add some detail, like some sputings and boxes around just to uh, like very basic in Blender. And then I import to Keyshot. And here, just another clip showing my process. So this time I had actually added the textures in Keyshot because to me it was kind of easier uh, because it was the perspective was a little bit tough on this one. And then play with some HDI eyes. Um, yeah, just placing where I want the sunset. And again, Keyshot makes this very easy, like just grabbing, you download HDI eyes from the internet and just start playing around with that. So kind of play with a different one there. And then I, when I get to a nice rendering that I like, I just go to like to a basic rendering, go to, to Photoshop and start playing around. So you can see like that I separated the background there because I want to use a different background. So I find a nice stock photo, try to correct the perspective, uh, add the lighting, um, do some paint overs just to take out some details that I want, don't want to be distracting, uh, add some fogs to really separate the foreground to the background, add some extra textures um, on the spaceship, <laughs> like collect, correcting some parts of like at each material that I want, like to get the, the lighting right. And start adding some extra elements around to tell the story that I want that the painting uh, tells. So like in this case, like it's just like uh, maybe a station that they're repairing the spaceship. And here's just doing some photo bashing, color correcting, and some, um, yeah, all details around. So like, for instance, with some paint overs, brush strokes to, to break up the edges and really integrate the images on the painting do some final color corrections and then yeah, can get to the, the final painting, which is this one. So yeah, again, like mix, mixing a lot of different tools and uh, like spaceship it was done in VR, the whole buildings in Blender, Keyshot, Photoshop. So this is normally how I do and use the tools whenever I want them to use um, in a way that I feel that's gonna improve and make easier in my workflow. Uh, again, so this was another um, seeing that's basically rendering key shot and then after some post work in Photoshop. Uh, yeah, in this one, I, you I change a lot like the lighting and but to tell in behalf of the story that I wanted the painting to tell. So this is the last spaceship that I want to show you. And this one is less cool to me because it was the first time that I actually did the interior. Uh, and I was trying to push what I want to, like the details that I want to do in, in Gravity Sketch. And here is, to me, like it's one of the, the most amazing things of working with VR and immersive technologies is really playing with scale. So now like you can be at one time, like really hold a miniature in your hand. And then, but then another time, like you can really zoom in and actually be inside the spaceship now and be actually there as you're flying and having like the feeling and, uh, and then like really work on your design as you're actually there. So now you can see like, oh, maybe I add an extra button there. Oh, maybe oh, the control is too far away. I can push now, or maybe I can add some extra cables here on the windshield. So it's more believable. And also to do that, like it's something really cool is placing a lot of reference all around. So this one on the clip that I was, when I was actually designing, I took a lot of photos from view um, cockpits, from aircrafts and just place all around me. And I was, when I was actually designing, I was just looking at how real cockpits work and doing some like adding the extra details there as makes a little bit more believable. So as working this way, like is I'm actually there inside the spaceship and have all the references all around me floating in space. And like, it, this is something that was really blown away with how cool this technology is. And again, like just same process, like this is the final model that I can export, bring to Keyshot and do the final rendering. Um, so like, like this is the final result. This texture is actually in this one I added in Keyshot. Um, but yeah, I can do like this basic um, overall renderings. And 
And here, like, is just a close up of the interior. And uh, you can see, like, it's, it's all very basic, like, just the buttons, like, there are simple boxes. But to me, that was enough because I wasn't planning to do a close, close up shot of the interior and really just using a uh, medium shot. And so I can just reference that there is actually a, a interior in there. So, yeah, so in this case, you can see, like, oh, there's actually something there. It's not empty. Um, but yes, yeah, not totally refine it. Um, yeah, so on this clip here, I just want to show another feature that I think it's cool, and it's the feeling of co-presence and be entering a room and have an interaction with multiple people. And so this was just a quick uh, exploration that we were doing like in these past days, uh, and basically just entering a room in a Vera room. And in this case, we are using another software called Shapes XR. And really enter like two to three people and have a review of the design and really go in there and see like the interior and you can see like the avatars there like it's just people really talking having a conversation and making annotations together and if you're seeing like imagining like you'd be reviewing a scene of a movie or a game like you keep really playing together and yeah have this iterative process of uh, yeah having a design review. So this is something really awesome in VR. So, so this is the just the last breakdown that I want to show you. And here I'm gonna like do another uh, environment painting with this spaceship as well. And I really want to sh show like that it's not the two that's the most important, but what's the story that I want to tell and how you play with the composition. So in this case, like, again, I'm using the same tools, like key shots, very basic. I'm, uh, I'm gonna put like a, a image there, like a stock image that I found that it was cool that I use as a base and then just rotate to find a nice angle, play with some HDRIs to, um, yeah, correct. Try to mimic the lighting of this scene. It doesn't need to be perfect. And that's just totally fine to me because it's, I just want to have a good base. And then I can have this basically rendering from Keyshot. And then I really start bring that to Photoshop and start working on that. And here, just putting the, my frame that I want for the painting and then just erase a little bit uh, on the side so I can just copy the same environment and push to the side so I can expand a little more the forest. And then so I have completed forest now. Adjust a little bit the contracts, the lighting adding some uh, extra brush strokes all around because I don't want to be looking like at that looks a perfect photo. So I want to take out some details and also to not be a distraction. Like I want people to pay attention more in the, the foreground, like in the spaceship, spaceship here in the front and then correcting the lighting of the spaceship. And here, of course, I'm skipping a bunch of different layers that I do, but just to give you a general sense of the steps that I go through and so now like it's the lighting are correct, like the, all the overall environment, it's all looking good. And I could actually stop here. And to me, this just fine. Like, okay, I have a nice spaceship there sitting in the forest, nice sunlight. But what's actually the story that I want to tell in this painting? And this is what I like, this start to evolve on like, and really start driving your creative process. So maybe like the spaceship is sitting there and there's actually someone actually waiting uh, for something or someone to arrive or something like that. So then I add a little tank there because maybe this person is waiting for a couple of days or, um, and then I can, maybe you, you are in another planet and maybe this tribe like lives, have some houses on the tree. So I added like a little detail there on the background. Uh, and then I added these two characters here, like just sitting there relaxing in the sunset um, as they're just waiting for something. And the spaceship is actually for one person. So the second person, the second pilot there is maybe he's playing a crash at doing a battle and they're waiting to be rescued or uh, whatever is happening. So I added another crash at playing there in the back. So it gives more the story at a couple of other objects like in pieces uh, of equipment of the, the vehicle is spread through the through the forest. Um, started adding some other details uh, around to help in the story, some backpacks, some 
uh, bags uh, added to some rope uh, because maybe they're waiting for a couple of days. So it's like they're actually hanging some things. Uh, yeah, add some extra boxes, uh, pieces, and then some elements on the foreground as well because maybe you're a forest and the camera is a little bit behind a plant or a tree. So it gives you a little more sense that's actually a forest and you're more integrated to the environment. Uh, correct a little bit the lighting there of the sun and then just do the final uh, level corrections uh, and then yeah can get to this final painting so it's really just want to finish with this one because it's really like you can use a lot of tools that you want but really the story and the composition uh, really is going to drive your creative process and use what you need to use the tools uh, in that behalf of uh, using that to represent the, the your creative vision. So uh, yeah, so just less like key takeaways that I want to give you guys is uh, first one is there's no other ideal or perfect workflow. So uh, always uh, learn from other process. Like I, I always like to watch some other artists and designers workflow, but really follow your process that you feel comfortable and that maintains your creative freedom. So like always keep that like your creative vision and you actually use the tools in a comfortable way that it's helping you and not making you rigid. So this goes to the second key takeaway, which is tools should not dictate your design process, but your creative freedom should dictate what tools you use and when. So yeah, like you have all this array of tools like VR, uh, 3D, 2D, like use them in a way that you want them to use and help your uh, your process and not the other way around. And lastly, uh, you don't need to be expert with software to achieve amazing results. So the basics are more than enough for you to deliver great work. So I'm not an expert in Blender and not an expert in Keyshot or um, Gravity Sketch, but I just use the basic functionalities of each one then. And I always try to learn new tricks, of course, like if I do something that saves me a little time, I, I always enjoy doing that, but um, like I don't need to, to understand everything about the software, just the basics. Uh, and the most important thing is your creative vision and you like your inspirations that you're gathering and the story you want to tell in the end of your concept design. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, feel free to ask any questions and get in touch with me like in my social media. So my Instagram, LinkedIn, also my website and also want to check the questionnaire website as well. So I, here is the link. So, so yeah, hope you guys enjoy. So thank you. Thanks Danilo. I mean, that, that last comment kind of like really wraps up your entire talk. Just be free and like choose the tools that actually make sense for that particular thing that you're looking to do. Yeah. One, one thing awesome. that I really loved was that you kept saying that you're not an expert in any of the tools, right? And it's not about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically the key. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like a little bit like, and this like when I, you asked me to talk and make this talk, it was like, hey, but I'm not an expert in gravity sketch. And, and that's fine because people should not be afraid of the tools and really just jump in and start exploring. And yeah, a couple of hours of exploring gravity sketch i was able to do like really cool things so uh, any any of the two so yeah just go and explore and yeah do great things absolutely we have some questions from the audience so there's one um would you consider so, the transition from 2d to 3d a collaborative creative process if there has to be two people working on each part separately Example, does the 3D skill set require creativity or is it more technical and not necessarily creative? Yeah, should I start sharing my screen or should I keep this way? As you wish, as you wish. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and we can share um, if we, if it's necessary, any, any other questions. So uh, if I think it's a skill set for two different people, right? So. I think it depends. And nowadays people are really blending a lot of skill sets together. And I myself, like I started just more 2D and I was in the beginning really afraid of 3D because uh, I was, no, I am actually a 2D person. And, but in reality, like when you start playing around, um, yeah, it's just, it's just tools and you use whatever you want. And um, 
of course, there are some people that are more experts, something like some people are more good sketchers, like they're faster in this way. And some other people are really amazing 3D, like go into more details and like do the tweaks in rendering to achieve good results. So I think it depends on what you want to do and achieve as a result. So uh, like if you, your goal is to go through uh, initial exploration quickly and then create a really, really nice 3D model, like really amazing with all those textures, probably there, there are some cool, uh, amazing artists out there that could do this, but sometimes it's kind of hard to find those people and working together, collaborator is really good. So, but it's not a totally like, it's, it's necessary to people, it's just, um, I now everyone's mixing together all of those different skill sets. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, cool. All right. We are. We have a lot of awesome, uh, really awesome work. Thank you so much for sharing your work. Beautiful piece. Like you have so so many like amazing comments. Um, awesome. If there's Thank anyone in the audience uh, that wants to raise their hand and actually ask questions, you can also feel free to do that. Um, otherwise, I think we can start wrapping up. Um, Danilo, it has been amazing to have you here at the round. Thank you so much for showing us your work. Yeah, no, I need to thank you guys and thank you for the opportunity. And it was, I was really amazed by like when I saw the lineup, like Jama Durabaev, like Scott Robinson, and all those amazing guys that they're all my designing heroes. Like, I was like, oh, oh my God, like I'm a little nervous. But it was totally a pleasure and like I simply love Gravity Sketch and like just sharing. I love the this community of because everyone is just so open to share your process. And I always learn so much when I see tutorials and see like, oh, you can actually do this trick and oh, there's actually another thing and, and keep learning from each other. I think that's an amazing thing. So um, yes, yeah, so just wanted to thank you. And yeah, anyone who wants to just reach out and asking any other thing just feel free and i'm really open to that so okay. yeah just thank you <laughs> thank you danilo and uh, for everyone watching we are our, our next talk is going to be in 15 minutes with um inga ceo of tibori see you later see you guys bye